In this video, I'm going to show how to use the remote DB connector in order to download data from our Reddit MongoDB database. The first thing you need to do is to create a new Python script in your favorite IDE. Here, I've created the file main underscore example underscore remote DB connector dot pi in my favorite IDE, which is Spider. Right now, there's nothing in it. But through the use of Studio 3T, we're going to create a query that we can translate into Python. I'm also going to provide you with some code examples on how to use the remote DB connector. All right. So our first step is to go ahead and create the file, then go to Studio 3T and connect to our Reddit database. Now, you might notice my MongoDB looks a little bit different. As an administrator and manager of this database, I actually have a few other databases than just what you have. So you can see I have OpenSky, Symfony, WebTracks, and a few others. These have to do with my other research projects. But you should see one database called Reddit. If you double click on Reddit, it will load the names of all the collections of each database. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of them stretching back all the way to 2010. Now, for this video, we're going to focus in on one particular month. This would be November, no, oh, not November, October 2016. So, double clicking on it, we can bring up example documents that are in the collection of this database. Each document in this collection corresponds to one Reddit submission. Scrolling through, you can see it has information about the submission. This includes who posted it, when it was posted, how many upvotes or downvotes it might have, the score, it also has information about links and media and how many comments were made in the submission. Now, we can view these documents multiple ways. Depending on how you started MongoDB or Studio 3T, you might have the same view I have, which is the JSON view. If you click on the drop down menu, you'll see that there's a few different options. One is a tree view. The next view is a table view. So this is kind of like Excel. And finally, we have the JSON view that I started off with. You can also click the settings button to sort of make some changes on how the data appears to you in the GUI. Using the query function, we can filter for submissions in the subreddit funny. We do this by just typing in curly brace quote subreddit colon quote funny. When you press return, Studio 3T will only display those documents that correspond to submissions within the subreddit. feel free to scroll through. By default, you only see 50 documents at a time. If you want to see more, you can just click the arrow buttons up above. One thing that's useful to do is to count how many documents result from your query. This will give you a good idea of how much data you might have to download, and if it's just too much. This process of counting documents can sometimes take a while. Here you see we have 62,000 documents. 
Just in case you didn't catch it, the query filter subreddit colon funny actually comes from the documents itself. You can see the field subreddit in the document listed here. There are also a bunch of other fields that you could filter on if you want, like the score, the link flare, the author, and even the title or URL. Whatever you want to do, you just have to make a, fil a query filter that makes sense. Now, all this data is a lot, and we might not need it all. So one thing that we can do is we can only project certain fields. A projection means we're not taking all the fields, but only the ones we want. So in this case, let's say we wanted to project the score. We do that by typing into the projection field score, surrounded by quotes, colon, one. If we wanted to add additional projections, we could type them in using the same format, just separating them by commas. So here we have created UTC. This is the date time when the submission was submitted to Reddit. Now, this number might look a little bit funny, the 147528 This is called Unix time. It is the amount of seconds from January 1st, 1970. I know this seems a little bit random, but it makes sense. Um, the reason we use this is so that we don't have to deal with um, time zone changes. This is sort of like a standard time everybody in programming can use. We're going to grab one or two other fields that might be useful to us. We can grab, let's see, there should be one for the score and one for the title. So here you can see the title field. And we'll go ahead and add that into our projection. If we run that query, we now see that we get a subset of the data for each document. Instead of getting 20 or 30 different fields, we only see four. The first one is the ID number associated with each document. And this is by default that you'll always get it. The next is the created UTC, universal time, um, which we talked about. It's also the title. And then finally, the score. One of the great things about Studio 3T is it will help us translate the MongoDB query that we generated into code. If you click on the drop down menu, you'll see that Python is one of the options. So go ahead and select Python. And what you can see is the equivalent query written in the Python programming language. So for now, we'll go ahead and copy this whole thing. We're actually not going to use all of it because the remote DB connector will manage a lot of the code or about half the code that's in there. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this code that we pasted in and I'm going to press control one. This will comment out the code. At this point, we have code that allows us to query the MongoDB database in order to find all posts in the funny subreddit. Now, the problem is we first need to connect to that MongoDB database, and we're going to do that using the remote DB connector. So heading back over to GitHub, I've provided some test scripts that we can use in order to generate the code that will allow us to connect to the DB connector. We're going to do this by going into the test folder and then clicking the file tests underscore SSH tunnel underscore mongodb.py. Clicking on here, you'll see some Python code. Go ahead and copy it and then paste it back into your spider code. Now, we're not actually going to use everything. The most important line is on line eight. This is what actually loads the package remote DB connector. And in fact, it loads an object called dbcon, which just stands for db connection. 
Now there's a few extra lines in here that aren't needed, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. These have to do with pandas. So you'll see me delete lines 9 and 13. Now we need to provide information about how Python will connect to MongoDB. This includes all the username, password, IP address, and lots of other information that's needed. All this information is going to be stored in a config file. By default, this code uses myconf example underscore mongo.cfg. Now we're going to create our own config file and fill in the necessary details. But first, let's download the example config file so you know what goes inside of it. Going back to GitHub, we're going to find the example config file that I've provided in the test folder. Go ahead and copy everything inside of this file. Going back to Spider, we're going to paste this information into a configuration file. Right now, the default file name is myconf example underscore mongodb.cnf, but I don't really like that. So I'm going to change it to something more readable so we know what it is. So I'm going to call the file myredditconf.cfg. Creating a new file, I'm going to paste what we just copied over. I'll then save that file as myredditconf. .cfg. Going back to the com file, I'm now going to change the various configuration parameters. So the first one corresponds to the IP address of the MongoDB database. You might have to look this up, but if not, you can just copy it from the, what I'm typing in now. Next, we type in the username for this server, along with your password. Now, these are the credentials you first generated. They're the username and password for the server. Remember, you have a username and password for the server, and then you have a separate username and password for the MongoDB database. Next, you need to change some of the port information. For those of you who don't know ports, what ports are, don't worry too much about this. Just replicate what I'm doing here in the video. Where it says type, we're going to enter in what type of database we're connecting to. In our case, we're using MongoDB, so we'll type in Mongo. Now, one thing you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm deleting all the comments after the parameter values. That's because if you're running in Windows, having these comments or text after the hashtag causes things to mess up. In Linux, this isn't a problem. So for those of you who aren't using Linux, go ahead and delete everything after the pound symbol, including the pound. So again, continue by filling in what I'm filling in. Here for the DB, we're going to type in the database name that you're validating your username and password against. For you guys, it's the Reddit database. It's here where you type in your username and password for that Reddit database. And there you go. You now have your com file. Make sure to save it. Now when we run the code, what this does is it will connect to the MongoDB Reddit database. So we see that on line 11, it does it all for you. Next, on lines 13 and 14, what the code is doing is getting a list of all the databases that you have access to. 
So in this case, you can see um, it prints out on the console that the only database that this user has access to is Reddit. This is what you should see as well in your console area. As a test, I can show you what I see when I enter my administrator username and password. So here I am changing the config file and then saving it. Now I can go back to the example code we've written and run it. Here you can see that I now have access to about six or seven different databases. These were the ones that we first saw when I connected to MongoDB using my administrator username and password. So I was playing around with Python a little bit, and you can see in the console here that there's a lot of text from a previous run, and in fact there was an error. So sometimes what you need to do is you'll need to restart the console or open up a new console. So you can actually do that pretty easily. So all you have to do is right click and then just select restart console. And that will start you off with a fresh new console so that you can run your program in. There we go. The other thing you can do is just close the console by clicking the X and a new one will start automatically. You could then rerun your program in there. At this point, we can start cleaning up the code so that we can run the query on the funny subreddit. Now, all the work that we've done up until now is just to replace this line 21. The reason is, our MongoDB database is housed on a computer server that we try to protect from cyber attacks. The only way to connect to the server and, in particular, the MongoDB database on that server is to use the SSH protocol on port 22. Now, the other added complication is that we need to make sure that this code works even if you're off campus. So everything in Remote DB Connector is to allow us to do that. So whether you're off campus or on campus, you can connect to the computer server where the MongoDB database is running. All righty. So um, that's what we've done. And so we're going to replace line 21. So line 21 that we got from Studio 3T assumed that you didn't have all these security protocols in place. So what we're going to do is now that we found a way to connect to MongoDB using Remote DB Connector, we can delete that line. The next step is to handle line 21. Client square bracket Reddit just told Python to connect to the date the Reddit database. Now in our case, we need to change things a little bit because the remote DB connector has the connection to the MySeq the MongoDB database inside of it. So if we want to connect to the Reddit database, we have to use the my tunnel variable that we created on line 21. So here we replace where it said client with mytunnel.con, which just means is short for connection. So we're using our tunnel to the MongoDB database to connect to the Reddit database in MongoDB. From there, everything else is pretty much the same. So now I'm going to highlight all the text and press Control-1. Now, there's only one little caveat. So this code is pretty much good to go, except lines 40 and 41 don't really work because the client that we just erased is embedded within the MyTunnel object code. 
I've sort of hidden that from you so you don't have to worry about it. But what you'll see here though, in lines 26, 28, 30, 32 down, is are essentially the components of our query. So 26 establishes that we're gonna run a query and it's empty. All right. 28, we basically say, well, we're gonna query for on the field subreddit and we're gonna look for the string funny. Now, that character u, you don't really need it if you're writing your own queries, but MongoDB or Studio 3T put it that in for us. It just indicates that we're querying on a string, but you actually don't need it. So if you want, you could have just written query quote subreddit equals quote funny. That would have worked as well. The next thing that we're going to do is to set up our projection. Now we're going to project on three variables, which is score, created UTC, and title. So you can see we create a dictionary variable where we establish the projection. We then put that all together on line 36 and we run the query on the collection. All right, so you'll see this collection.find and then we provide it with the query and the projection information. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. Now, when we run the code, what's gonna end up happening is lines 37 and 39 are gonna cycle through all the documents that are returned from the query. Now, the way Python normally works, when you query a database, you only get one value or one document at a time. And it does this by a cursor. So one way you can think about it is if you had a cursor in a file and you were going, you know, pressing the down button through the file, you'd see one line at a time where the cursor is. That's kind of what's happening in lines 38 and 39. Each time in the for loop, it's going to collect one line or one document. And then we're going to print that document to the console. So let's watch that happen. So right now it's just running the query on the database. Oops. Oh, and we had an error. The reason for this error is I accidentally left the tunnel closed. So when we first wrote the program, lines eight through 17 would open up a tunnel to the MongoDB database, print all the, the databases that were in it, and then close. And we see this on line 17. But then on line 21 and below, I try to run all these queries. Of course I can't run a query if I've closed my connection to the database. So that's why I realized I did something wrong. So I'm gonna take line 17 and put it at the bottom of our code. Now I have to restart the console because it sort of messed up on us. I should restart it. I actually don't have to. In fact, instead, I'm going to clear the console. Now, usually this isn't good practice because what happens is all the variables are still saved in the console. Um, it's better to start fresh, but in this case, I wanted to do things a little bit quickly. So I just cleared the console to make it look more visually appealing. All the variables are still there. All right. So next, I'll rerun my code. And now you can see it's starting to print all the documents that are being downloaded from the MongoDB Reddit database. Don't forget, there are about 60,000 of them. Now, I get this little error here at the end because on line 39 and 40, after it finishes the loop, it tries to close the connection in client. But remember, all the connection information is handled in the myTunnel variable and closed on line 42. So for that reason, I'm just gonna get rid and comment out those lines. Instead, I wanna do something different. Instead of getting each document one at a time by going through a for loop, 
I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take the cursor variable and cast it as a list. When you do that in Python, what it will do is collect every single document um, as cursor loops through. So effectively, what we're doing is the for loop in lines 40 and 41. And it's going to end up storing it in a single variable. So now we're going to run the code again, and it's not going to print anything out this time, but we'll see all the documents get stored to a variable called all docs. So going to the console, we can type in all docs, and it will print out all the data. And sure enough, you see each submission with the date it was created, its title, and the score. As the next step, I'm going to do a little bit more cleanup on the code. So we don't need these lines up here at 12, 13, and 14. And I'm going to get rid of some of the extra comments just to make it a little bit more compact. Now again, remember, running this query for the subreddit funny. And so we don't need all this other stuff. And maybe what we can do is we can actually store this data after we download it all. So right now it's in a list, but we can go ahead and convert it to a data frame using pandas. Now the trick to doing this is uh, just passing all docs into the data frame function of pandas. And it will automatically convert it into a data frame, which is kind of neat. So of course we need to import pandas. Um, so you see I did that on line nine. Now let's go ahead and run it and you can see how it's converting a list of documents into something that looks like a CSV file. Oh, and I have an error because I misspelled data frame. So let's go ahead and rerun the code with the correction. There you have it. So now if we look at all docs df, which is a data frame, you can see all the data is sort of formatted in a nice table. We can then write this table out to a CSV file. So I'm just going to put this line of code into the function, into the script, so it stays there permanently. Now let's go look at the file that ended up getting written. So I'm going to go to where the code is located because that's where we'll find the file. And there we go. We see funny 201710.csv. Now the CSV files, of course, can be opened in Excel. And sure enough, we see the title of each Reddit submission. Sometimes the characters get a little bit funky. Um, we also see the time that the submission was created. And lastly, the ID, a unique ID for the submission. This is pretty useful if you ever want to find more details of the submission in the database. You can just search by that ID column. So that's it. We now have a way of connecting to the Reddit database on our MongoDB server.